the narcissist and how they deal with illnesses, how they deal with it when you are sick. And I have uh, had this experience from, from having, a, I had a mother who was a nurse. And the remarkable thing about that was just how she was just not a caretaker at all. She just really hated caretaking. And so it was really hard to imagine her nursing. And I've said in a few different episodes how she talked about um, how, how the kind of nursing that she enjoyed most was uh, to care for really, really sick people, like people on death's door. She liked, the, she liked the intensive care unit. She liked it when people were too sick to talk. Um, she didn't like to be uh, dealing with people's emotions. She didn't like to be dealing with people's demands. Uh, she could do the technical, the technical stuff of caring for someone who was really, really sick. Being a nurse was good cover for that. And so, you know, no one in the family, no one in our community would ever suspect that my mother wasn't a nurturing caregiver caregiving person much of what much of what I've gone through in my life uh, no one would ever ever think would ever suspect it and in fact I didn't even think that there was anything wrong with it for the longest time but, but there were times when it was really pretty outrageous so there were things that were really neglected when I was a child and there was just really no payoff whatsoever the goodies the emotional goodies in my family came from not needing anything, came from, you know, what there was to be had was had when you were happy, when you were healthy, when you were making our parents feel successful in the fact that you didn't need anything. When you, if you did anything where you needed something that they didn't want to provide, it looked like they were failing at having to do something that they didn't want to do that parents should do. Well, of course, that's a very complicated thing that I didn't understand as a child. I just understood as a child that when that being sick was sort of a lonely thing to be. Sometimes it's kind of sad for me as a kid because I would think about how she was at work, and there was there was times when she was actually in pediatrics taking care of sick kids. When I would be sick and she wouldn't, she was had no interest in taking care of me. You know, like even as I got I got older and I would like call her from at college and have some kind of health concern, and she her abrasiveness at just not wanting to even have to talk about it, not wanting to have to show me any kind of empathy. You know, I moved away when I was 17, and so I didn't have a lot of contact with her after that. So I had time to build up in my mind the fantasy of what she was, and I, and I also didn't remember my childhood. So when I left home at 17, I only had a couple of years of memory. And also she was in college. She worked all day and then was in college all night and every weekend. So we had very little contact. So I really, I left home, I really didn't know her. And so, but I kept having time, I kept having time to rebuild up the fantasy of what she would be like if I just approached it a different way this time or I tried, or this time it'll be different because this is, you know, more serious, or or if I share this with her, she'll see that I'm, you know, really trying to, I'm letting her in, I'm trying to um, build an intimacy between us, and she'll see that I'm trusting her, and, and she'll really respond to that. And every time, there's not a single time that I can think of where she came through for me in any kind of way, um, emotionally when I needed when I needed her so and of course this goes on and I marry my I marry a man who's just exactly the same way and um, and the funny thing about him was the thing that I had never experienced before with with him was that on the rare occasion I was sick which was really really rare and he and he was really sick too we both had really good you know immune systems and and we were not ever hardly sick but every time that I was sick he was sicker <laughs> Every single time that I was sick, he was sicker. I had to take care of him. On the occasion that it wasn't something that he could just duplicate or ever, he just basically left me alone and totally ignored me. Totally ignored that I was sick, that I, that I and did not help me. There was not a single time that I can remember him taking care of me or helping me at all, except for, except for when I was in labor, uh, when I was in labor. and. And that was, of course, there was an audience around. Uh, you know, I, I spent the first half of the labor by myself because it's, it's, it's 
early. It's, it's five and a half weeks before I'm supposed to be going into labor. And he tells me that I'm screwing up his whole schedule. And, you know, he, you know, too, uh, too bad. I can't be there. You're probably all wrong. It's probably not even labor anyway. And, you know, you're screwing up my schedule. And so I spent the first half of that labor by myself. Fortunately, I guess for him, it was a long labor. So he was still able to make it with plenty of time to help me and be there for the moment. And you know, the grand poobah of getting to cut the cord and all that. Of course, he didn't miss any of that. I don't remember a single time that I said something about something hurting or something and having any kind of reaction like that anyone was concerned about it. As a little kid on up. So I have these two hospital experiences. I, I am a very into, I'm totally doing natural birth with, late, with a midwife. You know, I can think about, you know, the truth that I came to realize later about how he didn't love me and how it was all acting and stuff like that. And it kind of gets a little bit heartbreaking. So you have to get used to just holding on to those moments and know that they were really and true for you and, and all of that. But Anyway, the, the next time that I go into the hospital, and only the third time really in my, in my whole life was when I actually am dying from this heart attack. And I have the, I have the heart attack stories on here and they're really eerie and you, you should watch them to see how this plays out. But I tend to believe that, the, that really, what it was was it was just absolute heartbreak. I was just my I, my my immune system was just breaking down. The reason I say that is because of what happened, what ensued afterwards, which was it was very clear to me when I am resuscitated and I live that I'm looking at the face of my husband and my parents, and they're not that happy that I'm alive as it comes out that I'm not just going to bounce right back to the old person that I was, now I've actually got disabilities and I'm going to need some extra help and things like that, then it really got ugly. Then it was very clear that the definite message was if you couldn't just be, if you couldn't just be who, you're, who you were before, why didn't you just die? Before I knew it, they were abandoning me and they were implying that it had something to do with drugs, this heart attack, which of course it didn't. And of course, if anyone had asked me about it or if there had ever been any, that, I mean, everyone, these, the people that were just doing that, people close to me knew it didn't. After I got, after I got, I got through it and then I was on pain medicines, plus I was on antidepressants even before that, that was, I had a vulnerability. If, I, if they didn't need me, if I didn't continue to be an asset, they would just be out. I felt that all the time. And then this happened and it was all that, it was, all that was required. I mean, he was out. This is just the worst thing. They have no, they have no, no desire to meet your needs, to take care of your needs at all, even in the best of times. Their relationship with you is purely based on what you can do to meet their needs. Well, so now there's no point in having you around at all if you can't meet their needs and all you're doing by being sick and stuff is pointing out to themselves and anyone who's looking that if they don't, if they're not trying to take care of your needs, it shows their mask. It reveals their mask. How could I be truly sick and have this wonderful caretaking husband or this nurse mother not taking care of me. This was the explanation, was that uh, we're all basically abandoning her because she's got a drug problem. And that, and that seemed to be an explanation that people were buying. It's, it was really, really twisted. So the, you know, when I had this heart attack and I, and I almost died, there was not, not a visitor, not a phone call, not a bouquet of flowers, nothing. They really kept this thing quiet and it wraps. They did not want anybody to know what was going on. And I'll tell you what, when I got out of the hospital, it was Easter Sunday of 2001, Monday, everyone was back at work and it was really not ever mentioned again. It was like it never happened. If you're ever hearing a parent talk about their child, uh, their strange relationship being their child's fault, they have no idea why, ask questions. And, I'll, I'm, and I will bet you every time that I've done that, it has not held up. 
they can't hold up to questions and they're hoping you won't they're hoping that you'll be so uncomfortable and so polite and stuff that you won't ask questions that you'll just accept what they're saying i have almost died i've had a heart attack i have two little kids i'm in serious health problems and all of a sudden i'm going to abandon my family and my husband it doesn't make any sense but that's what the story was but the truth of it is is that narcissists cannot handle cannot handle illness they don't want to have your needs and here's the other thing when my when my when the things that were bothering me were like was like depression when i had when i was having all this depression and i was trying to talk to my parents about it I was trying to talk to my husband about it what i didn't realize was is that my depression was accusing them and I wasn't accusing them. I, I wasn't trying to accuse them at all. But my depression was, and because they were abusive and they knew they were abusive, I didn't know they were abusive, but I don't even know, I don't know how much they, I think that they always believed that I believed that they were abusive and, and wanted to expose them because they were projecting onto me the way that they were. It made them furious. It made them furious. They wanted me to, hide it to not talk about it they wanted it to not exist they didn't want because they felt like it was my way of trying to say that they did something wrong or there was something wrong with them which was never the point but they were so self-centered that that's all that they could see there were times when i was younger when i had i really needed a mother i really and she just could not stand that i was vulnerable that i was um, just could not stand that I had needs for affection and intimacy and tenderness and I, and needs for a mother. So, and of course my husband also is feeling like he feels like the depression accuses him. Like because I'm depressed, people are going to think that he's doing something wrong, which is why he goes out of his way to make sure that he tells my parents that the reason I'm depressed is because I'm having flashbacks to my childhood. So he gets himself off the hot seat and he triggers them, which he knows he's going to do. And that was basically all he needed to do to get the whole, the whole group to abandon me. So really, when it comes down to illnesses and, and vulnerabilities and narcissism, really, when it comes down to it, that's what ended the relationship, was the fact that I needed them.